So obviously one of the big pieces of news to come out of WWE this past week was the releasing of several individuals associated with the live events that WWE has put on in the past. You can chalk this up, I guess, to the 2020, huh? It's just, it's the nature of the beast right now. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, you've furloughed a bunch of these people. You aren't doing live events. You just don't have a need for these people. So it's kind of basic business sense that it doesn't make sense to keep them anymore. And, you know, admittedly, regrettably, that is true. Like, why would you be paying salaries to people that aren't really performing much of their function right now? Like at some point in time, it's just a basic business reality, uncomfortable reality, but the reality nonetheless. Uh, but really hits home when you see IRS is getting let go after so many dang years with the company and Gerald Briscoe. Like they cut Briscoe after 35 plus years with the damn company. Like 2020s taking no prisoners, no retreat, no surrender, it says. Now a lot of folks are going to blame COVID and I will... Use the same kind of logic here that I've talked about with other retail businesses and so forth that have declared bankruptcy. When the underlying fundamentals are not good, don't blame COVID for it actually happening. COVID was more of just an accelerant that led to a quickening of the eventual reality. That's what it was. Like, it's not like WWE's house show and live event business was booming anyways. And then COVID came along and took that away for six months and it devastated the company financially because that's certainly not the case. Like, live event attendance and performance had declined rapidly in recent years. We all know this. Like, this is an established fact. It's just that COVID accelerated that. That's all that happened. Now, when you look at it, you know, why were the live events not doing as well? There's just a general lack of overall buzz about the WWE product. It's also a reflection of the decreasing viewership of WWE shows, whether they be SmackDown or specifically Monday Night Raw. Um, but I think a big part of that as well is when you talk about the house show circuit, you know, when you're talking about the shift that the company's made over the past decade plus, that nobody's above the shield, nobody's above the brand, nobody's above WWE at the end of the day. Like, on the one hand, yes, you know, some folks will still go to a house show because it's like, well, WWE's in town. But I think this is where you really notice the lack of big time stars. The lack of truly appealing stars because it is those stars that can draw those people into those house shows. Because imagine if WWE came out and released a schedule and said, hey, we're going to have Rock doing a tour with us showing up in your town in three weeks. Guarantee the damn venue is going to sell out because they know the Rock's going to be there or Austin or what have you. Like If you know somebody like that's going to be there, you're going to show up. Because those big time stars can draw you big time audiences. When you get out of the business of truly trying to create big time stars, it's not a surprise that your live events don't do big time business anymore. And then when you think about just the house shows in general, like the business has changed, the wrestling landscape has changed. Why would you go to a show when nothing big is going to happen? Like really, nothing big is going to happen. Like on the one hand, yeah, it's kind of cool to go live and in person and see it. But if you're like here, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. So if I wanted to go watch a Raw, like when they're actually able to be on the road, I'd go watch Raw in Richmond in person, or I could go up to D.C. and watch it. And I think about my experience last year in July going up to D.C. Uh, to see WWE's, it was a, during the SummerSlam tour time at the Capital One Center. Now, the only reason I went was because I got corporate box tickets. They were free, so why not go? But when I showed up, the venue was damn near, you know, probably maybe two-fifths full. I'm probably talking about 8,000 people, if that, and I'm probably being extremely generous with the number here. In fact, I think I am. It was probably more like a quarter full. Not good. And you know, the show itself was like two hours, maybe a little more. It was nothing really that interesting that happened. 
You know, everything felt like pretty predictable. It's just the point of why would I spend money to have to still go travel, even though I didn't pay for the tickets, still have to go and, you know, do all of this and go through having to drive up 95 to go to D.C. to watch the damn event and all of that. Well, why go when nothing big is going to happen? Nothing big is going to come out of it. And that's, I think, a decision a lot of fans have made. It's just, it's not that important to them to go anymore. So it's not surprising to hear a lot of talk about the WWE, talking about dramatically rethinking uh, their approach to live events and somewhat getting out of the live event business. Not totally, but at least somewhat. And I certainly think there are both benefits to that and there are drawbacks to it. When you think about the benefits, there's a potential for a reduced talent schedule. I think everybody would agree that that's probably a good thing. Um, it could open up the door as well for more international tours where you're going to get a much larger audience you know, you could have those local governments pay you more to come there. So you could do less tours domestically, more tours internationally and grow your brand that way. Certainly could make a lot of sense. It could create an opening as well for doing more Saudi style type of shows on the WWE network. You know, they've made a lot of revenue from the Saudi government uh, doing those shows. And while I don't like the fact that they're doing uh, business with the Saudis, right? no different than our government, also what the hell is the difference? Um, but when you look at it, you could get out of doing that live event stuff on a more consistent weekly cadence and all the pressures and all the work and effort that has to go along with that and have more big shows where you're getting more revenue to be able to run them. Like I certainly would expect at some point in time that potentially could get events in China and other big countries, you know, Russia, like some of those ones that have authoritarian regimes will be able to they will certainly um, fork over a lot of money to bring in the WWE. So I certainly could see uh, that being something that comes as a byproduct of this decision. And then I also think about it too, having a smaller, leaner organization allows for more flexibility. One of the big challenges that any corporation runs into is they can get too big for their own benefit. It can lead to a lot of, you know, How's the best way I can put it? It can lead to a lot of things getting lost in communication, lost in translation. You can create layers of red tape that are unnecessary, that are true hindrances to growth and innovation. And perhaps running a smaller, leaner live event um, team and organization could be beneficial to this group in the long term. Now, I don't want to just sit there and pretend like there aren't drawbacks to this or there aren't concerns with this because there certainly are. You lose an important way for the talent to practice in front of fans. Like you want to be able to get these guys to be able to continue to hone their craft and work on their craft. So if they're working fewer shows overall, it is less practice. It is less of a chance for opportunity for growth and improvement, both in terms of in-ring and on the stick. You know, How do you supplement for that? How do you make up for that? Because you can't pretend like that doesn't have an impact. And when you already have a situation where a lot of these guys – really struggle to truly get over in a meaningful way, losing some of that practice doesn't seem like the best idea in the world. You also lose a very important way to potentially gauge audience reaction. It could give you an indication of, you know, who's really connecting with the fans? Who are the fans really getting behind? Who do the fans really hate? Who are the fans kind of ambivalent to? You lose a way for these guys to be out there and these gals to be out there and for you to be able to interpret and understand what the audience could be potentially thinking. You're losing another possible revenue stream as well. You know, it's one less chance to more to sell more tickets, make more money that way. It's one less chance to be able to sell some merch. But the reality is, is when I think back to the live event that happened last year in D.C., you got to pay rent and all the other travel expenses and everything else to perform there. And if you're doing that in an arena that's three-fourths empty, that's not good. You can't make a ton of money doing that. And as far as the merch piece, you know, a lot of people shop online anymore anyways. You could say, well, there's still the thing of the impulse buy when you go to the show. But, yeah, people got to be there for that to really matter. So while certainly losing another possible revenue stream, the reality is how much revenue are they really losing by changing the philosophy and potentially doing significantly fewer shows even once we got emerged from this kind of COVID quagmire. Um I do have some concerns about them losing the ability to connect with some of these local communities, especially some of those smaller communities that uh, don't have Raw and SmackDown or pay-per-views come to them. Like, you still want to be able to engage with them. You still want to be able to get there. You still want to be able to draw folks in there. 
So it certainly would make sense to me that if you go to some of these smaller communities to still do some of these shows, that might make sense. But then you realize or think to yourself, how much money you're going to really make from doing some of those types of events. And I think in large part, like it speaks to the larger overarching problem here, which is ignoring the actual problems that led to the decrease in live event performance and just leads to ignoring it instead of actually trying to address them and get better. Like this has been talking for a couple of years now on different investor calls and so forth that um, live event performance was down and they knew it and they knew how to fix it. And, you know, you get to 2020 and all of a sudden now they're talking about they're going to get out of this business and it's, it's an indication of anything. They don't know what's wrong. Like, how dare you sit there and say, you know what's wrong and then you clearly don't fix it. And it's pretty obvious to see what some of the bigger problems are. But the reality is, is that the times change. And there might not just be as much appeal for them, wrestling fans in this day and age to have those live events. Right? That's a reality. So I certainly think COVID is not entirely to blame here because there were already major problems. Already major problems. COVID just accelerated them. That's all that happened. I would still expect WWE to be doing some level of live events. Like obviously you're going to be doing the Raw TV tapings, the SmackDown TV tapings, etc. NXT TV tapings. Um, you can't go 52 weeks of the year and not do any type of touring at all. That's crazy. And that will be a recipe for disaster. But instead of doing the same old tours in front of two-thirds or three-quarters empty arenas, I can make, make sense. A little bit less could be more for the time being. And it'll allow you, like I mentioned again, to potentially do more international tours, get more of those special big event type of shows on the network, drive your audience to other places. And you got to constantly innovate and you got to constantly change with the times. Doing things the same way that you did them 20, 30 years ago may not work. Certainly holds up true in any business and wrestling is no different. Um, but as far as entirely getting out of the live event business outside of the TV tapings, I just can't see that happening. And if that does, somebody needs their head examined because I promise you that is going to be disastrous as well. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Like, had you been to recent live events over the past couple of years? Tell me about your experiences. If you haven't, why didn't you go? Is it because of that thing of, well, I know nothing big is going to happen, so I'm going to wait till a TV taping's here. Like, what's led you to go to shows and what's been your experience in recent years? What led you to not go to those shows? And what do you think the future holds for the WWE when it comes to live events? I'm curious to see your responses. Leave them in the comment section below and bam that subscribe button if you haven't already, damn it, and click the bell, what the hell, so that way you get notified when I do new videos on this channel. Later.